In this video, we are going to validate our learning vis-a-vis -vis income statement. We have learned how to prepare income statement and now we are going to look at the income statement of Reliance Industries Limited and validate our learning. The idea is to uh, look at the items in the income statement of Reliance Industries Limited and say, do we know all these items already or not? So let's get started. I have on the screen the income statement of Reliance Industries. Uh, we have income and expenses, two broad heads. The way we learned to prepare the income statement was in account format. We called it profit and loss account. Uh, it is uh, the same information just presented in a different way. Income was the credit side for us, expenses were the debit side for us. So same thing, same content being shown in a different format is all. If you look at the uh, first section, income is from sales, income from uh, services. So both of these would be the total sales of the uh, company. And then there is some GST that the company receives. And since as we earlier discussed, the GST belongs to the government, you have to deduct it from the sales uh, and then consider uh, you know, your total revenue. So your total revenue from operation is this much. And then you have your other incomes, which we used to show in the second section, if you remember. Second section. This is the first section of profit and loss account. And this is the second section of profit and loss account. Let us deep dive into these two and look at the details. So for the first section, we'll go to note number 24, which I have here. Revenue from operations. Now a disaggregation has been given. So the company has different lines of operations and you have been given the breakdown for all these plus income from services. So, you know, again, if you further look into the reports, uh, you know, you'll find more numbers. But just imagine, just understand that these numbers have been adjusted for any, you know, sales return, uh, which we have discussed. These will be adjusted for, for example, GST, uh, as we saw in the previous slide. So these are the final numbers after that. So this is nothing strange. You already know all of uh, about all of these. The next note I want to uh, want to take you to is note number 25 to see the breakdown of other incomes. If you remember, other incomes are the non-operating incomes. These were the operating uh, expen uh, operating incomes, and these are the non-operating incomes. So operating incomes are only from sales and hence note 24. Here is the note on uh, other incomes. The other incomes typically we saw commission and interest on investment. In case of Reliance Industries Limited, it is also interest. Interest on bank deposit, interest on some debt instruments, interest on other financial assets and some other. Uh, again, I'm uh, repeating that the items may be advanced, the kind of instruments that Reliance Industries invests in, they can be, you know, advanced national, international level instruments, which you may not be aware of. But you know that the income which is coming is uh, by way of uh, the investment that this company has done in different kinds of investment options. What are these investment options? That is a different question. That's a new question which needs research. You do a little bit of more online browsing, look through some reading material and you will understand what a debt instrument is. But the idea of this course, the objective of this course is to tell you that a company can invest in different investment options. And when you earn revenue, earn income on that, that income is going to be called other income, non-operating income. And such types of incomes are going to be shown like this in the income statement. So you know about these incomes already. Again, there are different types of uh, incomes there. Okay, next I want to take you to the expenses side here or the debit side which we have seen which has again two sections you show direct expenses and indirect expenses uh, figure out the gross profit and then the net profit let's see how uh, the companies actually present these numbers so under expenses the first item let me take a different color here the first item is cost of material consumed then you have purchase now I, I hope things are coming back to you. This is cost of goods sold. This is the purchase that you have. 
Then there's something called changes in inventory. Don't bother about it. This is an advanced topic of discussion. Uh, you have excise duties. So this is again direct expenses. You have employee benefit expenses, which are, you know, salaries and wages and provident fund and so on. Finance costs are uh, non-operating expenses as we have discussed and also the indirect expense typically should include interest. You have depreciation. We know what is depreciation and how do we arrive at these numbers. And there are a bunch of other expenses. We are going to jump into the notes and look at the details. We, we are familiar with many of uh, these terms. So let me go to note number 27. Employee benefit expenses have salaries and wages. What we used to do in the profit and loss account, we said we are going to show all you know manufacturing expenses here and we assume that all wages are at the factory level and all salaries are at the uh, you know sales level. Uh, however, that, that was only an assumption. In practice, uh, the company will decide that these expenses are at the factory level, these expenses are at the uh, sales level and accordingly segregate the two. In the statement format of profit and loss account, this segregation is not done. They you know, just show all the salaries and wages together. So here, contribution to provident fund is uh, given staff welfare expenses. And if you look at the annual report, you will have actually one or two more pages where distribution of these amounts is also provided by the company. Okay. So these are employee benefit expenses. Then there is note 28 on the finance cost. Finance cost, as we discussed, is the interest expense on the loans that the company has taken. Uh, and uh, then again, there are some notes on some you know jargon which has been used. That is the next step if you want to learn more about this. You can do more advanced courses in accounting or finance, financial management, valuations and so on to know all these terms. Uh, but in this course, what we wanted to learn was if a company is paying interest on the loans that it has taken, where is it showing that? It is showing that under the finance cost and there you have the uh, value. Then I'm going to note number 29 for other expenses. So if I go back to the income statement, uh, we looked at uh, most of these expenses and now we are at the other expenses. What are the details of these other expenses? So note number 29. This is where the you know majority of expenses are clubbed under other expenses. You have manufacturing expenses, which we showed in the trading account as the direct expense. You have the electric power, fuel, water, labor, repairs, uh, excise duty, lease rent. Again, typically rent was shown in the profit and loss account second section during practice problems. But I said if the rent is for the factory premises, then you have to show it in the direct expenses. And that's what the companies are doing here. You have selling and distribution expenses as a separate category. So all the expenses relating to sales are uh, further given uh, separately. Establishment expenses is another categorization. You have professional fee, possibly, you know, lawyers, chartered accountants and so on. General expenses of the business, you have rent. Now this will be office rent of the sales uh, staff. Insurance premiums paid, we know this. Rates and taxes, again, we've done this. Uh, this was one of the items in the final accounts. Uh, repairs and in traveling expenses, payments to auditors. Loss on sale, we have done this as well. Loss on sale of uh, property, plant, equipment, anything being lost by theft, fire, or other things can be shown here. And we know that this is non-operating expense. However, in this statement, they are not uh, worried about direct, indirect, operating, non-operating. It's more about following the uh, categorization that has been prescribed by the law. But internally, you want to know these numbers. Why? Well, there is a, a separate uh, module in this course which discusses why do we do this categorization, which is the analysis of financial statement. And that's where we'll discuss why the distinction between direct and indirect, uh, operating and non-operating. We need all that data to create information and we'll discuss that later. Charity and donations, again, goods given away as charity. So all the things that we have discussed till now, uh, you know, I'm not just making those up. 
everything is being done and disclosed by the companies in these prescribed uh, formats. So, so there you go. Uh, we have looked at the income statement of Reliance Industries Limited and hopefully I have uh, validated uh, the learnings that we've had. I've re-established your faith that whatever we have learned is uh, you know in line with what companies are actually doing. So I hope you had fun uh, you know doing this looking at the real uh, statements and saying yes I know all of these things. So go ahead again I encourage you to look at uh, the uh, statements of more companies Infosys, TCS whichever ones uh, you want to look at maybe download if you work for a public company download the uh, statements of your own company uh, and uh, look at those numbers what do they mean. Uh, I'm sure you know most most of the concepts mentioned there. All right, I'll uh, see you soon in the uh, following videos.